I think I got a bad crab last night. I just vomited for the last 12 hours straight. And it was just vomit. It was like both ends. It was like my body was evacuating everything. Okay, welcome to English camp. This is kind of cool. The Royal Marines landed here in March 21st, 1860 and established English camp. At the time they left 12 years later after the United States was deemed the island's rightful owner, the Marines had 27 structures, two wharfs, two wells, a pasture, a formal garden, several roads, and much... Are you ready for adventure? Subscribe now because we're getting ready for the great Siberian sushi run. So we um, woke up to this this morning from the church. going on for about 10 minutes pretty cool hey I think I got a bad crab last night I just vomited for the last 12 hours straight and it was just vomit it was like both ends it was like my body was evacuating everything from it holy crap I still have a wicked headache but it started at about four o'clock this morning and it just wouldn't stop I think I vomited about 20 times. And the chills and the shakes, it was like my, oh. And we thought it was alcohol. I didn't drink that much. So there's no way that was alcohol. And when I've had to vomit because of too much alcohol before, it's like twice and it's gone. This just never stopped. Oh. Wow, I haven't had food poisoning like that in a while. So I'm just slowly having a wee little bit of tea, introducing that to my body. I tried to hold gravel down during the night. There's no way that was coming right back up. Gravel for us is um, anti-nausea pills. But yeah, the cold shakes, it was just like. A sucky way to start off 2024. Okay, yeah, it's not over. Body does not like tea. We are not moving anywhere today. Whew, it's gonna shakes and cold chills. Whew. Um, Blaine's got to take Maggie to shore. I think I'm going back to bed. <sighs> My little bit of ginger ale. Whew. Okay, people, I'm alive. That was. You know, we're just gonna start 2024 all over again, right? <laughs> so I was vomiting from 4 a.m. till 9 p.m. And it was bad. And we've just thought, we, we actually had a plan that if I was still vomiting this morning, which I'm very weak right now, if I was still vomiting this morning, and that was food poisoning, that we would be, Lane would be taking the boat to Sydney, a BC, and call in the ambulance. Get to the hospital. But well, wow, I haven't had anything in my body. I'm shaking because I'm so weak. Actually, when I went to bed last night, I looked over at her to make sure she was still breathing. Well, that was crazy. Okay. Yeah, that was a pretty serious one. Let me get some tea into me. We're gonna start 2024 again. Yesterday was just a write-off. And then we're gonna go explore English camp. Garrison Bay. Garrison Bay. <laughs> it's quarter after nine. We just decided to pull anchor because we've been here for three nights and one day we kind of lost day. Yeah, somebody was. And we're gonna head over sure. to Garrison Bay. Yeah. Really, we're not going far. We're just going over to here. Go check out English Camp. That's cool. the plan. Okay, that looks like a fun little thing to get through. That yeah, shouldn't be too bad. It's not really much for wind right now. Okay, and dinghy's ready. Did we still Starlink? Yep. Okay, I'm going to go start. I'm just heating up my tea and then I will start pulling the anchor. Sounds good. Cool? Cool. I'm so weak. I just like nearly <laughs> collapsed walking up the seven <coughs> steps on the back deck. I came all the way up and I went, holy cow. Ooh. I got to slow down. My mind is like, okay, let's go. Woohoo! 
my body's like, Janice, whoa, you just vomited for 24 hours. Stand by, slow down. Okay. Yeah, don't collapse. Here we go again on our own. Gotta move the Starlink to get the button. Okay, snubber off first. Again, you can see how the snubber is, is taking the stress off the chain and it makes it so it's not so loud. But we gotta get it off first. Okay, snubber's off. take it fully off because we are going to use it again at the next anchorage so I'm just going to leave it right there. No issues. Wait, 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 T, hold on. Knee T. Okay, I still have the shakes. It's kind of cool, you guys can see all the current in here, all swirly. If you can sail Pacific Northwest, I tell people you can sail anywhere because the amount of current and stuff we get here, it's crazy. When Lane and I cruise Chile, it's about the same thing. The currents and stuff through the passes, it's just wild. Our boat just gets pushed around. Right here, by the way. I can't. Thank you. Love you. Good husband. We're almost off the ground, anyways. go through there and then we're gonna take a left going to port over into Garrison Bay where there's lots of cool history about the British and Americans battling over the um, pig war and that's the big thing we're going over to English camp there's actually still five British soldiers over here buried in marked graves and I got to go through the fridge and throw out the leftover crab because there's no way I'm eating crab anytime soon. Lane won't let me drive. He has control issues when there's really small channels like that. And I understand. I still love him. Even though I know I could drive through here, but we'll just let him do it. That's what it means to just be a good wife know the idiosyncrasies and just let them you know have control over it it's like me with driving a car he knows that I need to drive the car he just lets me do it Smells even making me gag. Bye bye, Krabby Crab. Okay, people, my first eating solid food. I've had two cups of tea, everything's good, it's all stayed down. And now I'm having mashed eggs. My mom used to make this for me. It's it's hard boiled eggs mashed up with butter, salt, and pepper. And it's exactly what I'm looking for today. So um, fingers crossed this stays down. I think it will, because I feel pretty good but I really need some solid food in my tummy. I really do blame. So we're just listening to the weather and uh, it's supposed to be a gale warning in Harlow Strait today. So they're expecting 25 to 35 knot winds, uh, which would be no good in Harlow Strait. 
uh, which we have to cross to get back to Victoria. Oh, is that Harrow we're crossing? Yeah. I thought that was out by Vancouver, by the ferries. No, that's, that's Georgia Street. Harrow right up through here. Oh, I'm so, glad we're tucked in here. Yeah, so we're tucked in pretty good in uh, Garrison Bay here. We'll hang out for the night. It's supposed to calm down this afternoon, and tomorrow is supposed to be calm. So, yay. Oh, glad we're tucked in. Yeah. That looks nasty. Yeah, that's what's currently happening out in uh, outside Vancouver Island. Holy cow. That's like 40 plus knots of wind out there. Yuck. Yuck indeed. That's why I was saying it's never accurate in here because it can't... The islands are so close together, the model doesn't really display accurately what's happening. Um, so it might show like five knots of wind. That's why I always look out there. If it's, if it's blowing out there, it's very likely going to be blowing in here, even if it's only showing like five knots inside the islands. So, yeah. It's pouring rain, and poor Maggie wants to go to shore. And Blaine and I are like, happen. no, we don't want to go to shore. <laughs> Not going to happen. Okay, we're braving the weather. <laughs> it's really yucky out, but the dog is desperate to get to shore, and we're going to go check out English camp. We're going to wait for the rain, but we looked at the weather for San Juan Island. It's going to rain. It's going to rain all day. Like, <laughs> It's actually not often I see 100% precipitation. Yeah. So you ready? Let's go. Get out of my gummy worms. You don't eat these anyway. They're I was sick for one. Ones. I was sick for one day and he's been eating all my gummy worms. You brat. She doesn't like the green and yellow ones. I'll still eat the green and yellow. No, the green and yellow ones I eat. Oh, the little seal's popping his head up. Yeah, you just wanted to change my my conversation about gummy worms. Squirrel. <laughs> okay, let's go to English camp. Okay, so Blaine looked on Time Zero, which is the software we use, and people are giving reviews of this place. It has like a 4.5 star review, this bay. A lot of people say it's their favorite bay. It's got a cool place to walk. Yeah, it's very it's... protected because again, we've got small water warning whatever craft Pretty much all of the reviews were five star the ones that were low were like three stars and it was because of all the crab pots there's a lot of crab pots oh yucky yuck i'm yeah, just gonna stand this way awesome. it's not awesome no this is horrible but we still are intrepid adventurers blaine intrepid are crazy i should have put on my new glo gloves Maybe we should have called Tango Roy and Trepid. There's two people. She looks good. To make a note here that both Blaine and I are fully decked out in northbound gear. It is the perfect day for it. So let me show you the jacket. This is a jacket, and we've been testing these for two years to make sure they work. So we got waterproof jackets and waterproof pants. And the cool thing about his pants is they don't cut, like they're cut proof. I've got my waterproof jacket on. I absolutely love it. There's so many pockets and my waterproof pants. They even make my butt look good. And no, we love our northbound gear. If you guys want a discount code, check it out down below. Um, northbound gear, thank you very much for sponsoring our gear for today. It's seriously the perfect gear to wear in this really rainy Pacific Northwest. Okay guys, English camp. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, Blaine, look. Nice dock. I was loving there's a nice dinghy dock. English Camp, San Juan Island, National Historic Park. Let's see over there. Peace over war. 1846, when the Oregon Treaty was signed, the United States and Great Britain thought they had ended their differences over a vast territory known as the Oregon Country. The treaty set the 49th parallel as the boundary between the two nations. But the treaty was ambiguous about which side of the San Juan Islands the boundary fell. It referenced a strait, but there are two straits. To keep peace, the nations tabled a decision, but the unresolved issue festered. A squabble over a pig in 1859 on San Juan Island nearly sparked war between the United States and Great Britain. At the heart of the spat was the island's rightful ownership. After 12 years of peaceful joint military occupation on the island, the British bowed out, accepting a German arbitrator's decision in favor of the United States. It opens. It doesn't open. 
some sort of workshop in there. Oh yeah, look, there's an old cart of some sort. Mm -hmm. Cool. To protect the garrison, one of the first structures built was the blockhouse. It was patterned after Americans camp blockhouse. You have problems with that one, eh? I am, yes. American camps. Try to it again. To protect the garrison, one of the first structures built was the blockhouse. It was patterned after American camps blockhouse. The upper story, turned 45 degrees on its base, protected soldiers from all angles as they aimed their rifles out of the loopholes. But the blockhouse was not only used as a guardhouse. The ground floor served as a guard room, and the upper level was a prison for Marines caught in misconduct. Officer's Hill! Tucked on the hillside in front of you are the officer's quarters. Children played on the terraces with family pets, wives clipped roses and shared tea with visitors, and off-duty officers talked politics and smoked pipes on their front porches. The cooking aroma that escaped the officer's mess was decidedly more savory than that of the enlisted men's mess. Pretty cool. It's well kept, eh? I know. Well, this is this is gonna be a Japanese maple right here. And some shrubberies, Blaine. What is that? Um, bingo. Holy Grail thing. Shrubbery. Shrubbery. Well, what do you want? We want a shrubbery. Is there anywhere in this town where we could buy a shrubbery? We have planted a shrubbery. <laughs> uh, Not too big. <laughs> Nothing like a little bit of Monty Python in the rain. Imagine you're super weak. I am very weak. The food poisoning yesterday just wiped me out, so I am just taking my time because I still don't have that much energy. Especially going up steps like this. Okay, maybe I need a hand. Plinth. That's a plinth. It looks plinthy. Looks monumentish. As arbitrator William I. Emperor of Germany, Germany decided the San Juan case. October 21st, 1872. Erected October 21st, 1904 by the Washington University State Historical Society. British Camp, 1860 to 1872. Look at all these rocks here. I must have been to level it out. I'd say the house was up there. Yeah. What the heck is that? Looks like a dog. Or a deer. Oh, it's a deer. Look at the uh, where the antlers go at the top. Oh, it's here? What it is. Yeah. That's pretty wild. That could be very wrong though. I do not know. If anybody knows, drop it below. Anatomy. What is that skeleton? There's another bone over there. Huh. So we've decided that we're going to take on Young Hill Trail. From this eminence, Young Hill, we had a very extensive view, they said. 1860, when William Warren and his U.S. Boundary Survey team climbed Young Hill, was nameless. As far as the Europeans knew. Of course, probably had a First Nations name. So we are heading up 0.2 mile. There's an English Camp Cemetery, which we're going to go visit and show you guys. And then two mile round trip trail to Young Hill Summit. Okay, <laughs> um, we may have to do this tomorrow. Well, let's go to the cemetery and see how that is, because that's 0.2 miles. Young Hill, 1.6K, we'll let you guys know. Okay, so we were staying here for the night and we were just talking that we might do Young Hill hike tomorrow. I just don't have the energy right now to do it. No, My legs are already feeling like jelly. Yep, yeah, and it's supposed to be drier tomorrow as well, so we'll be able to enjoy it a little more, I think. Okay, guys, tomorrow you're going to be able to see that. 
There's no way. I just like went up this wee little part and no. Okay, let's head back to the boat. What's that? Visitor center. Oh, nice. Is this a visitor center? I believe so. I don't think so. I believe so. Oh, maybe. Drop Maggie, I'm going in front. Oh. empty in there. They look like they're trying to refinish it. Yeah. Yeah, I got plywood back up. <laughs> Gotta try. It must be an old stove or something. Peek through that window. Wah! <laughs> Garrison to farm. Oh, this house was completed some 30 years after the Royal Marines left English camp. Jim Crook built it, the son of William and Mary Crook, who claimed the English camp lands through the Homestead Act provisions. William and Mary began raising their family here in 1875, about the time the U.S. Army auctioned off the camp buildings. William took ownership of several of the buildings, likely by default rather than purchase. It is because of Crook's waste not want not attitude that the few remaining camp structures survive today. What's this little house, Blaine? Oh no, it's kind of... Uh -oh. oh, this was a hospital. Ah. We can't read it. It's a hospital, guys. Can you actually see anything in there? Uh, maybe I'll go in. They have... Oh, they got some cool wallpaper. Fire extinguisher in a fire place. Let's look in here. Fireplace, cool flooring. Cool wallpaper. Do I look? Gotta check. It's locked. <laughs> I'm surprised. Another window. cool boat out there. Hey, what's that? Dinghy float. Hands across the border, an expression of goodwill donated by the International Yachting Fellowship of Rotarians, Vancouver Island. Us Canadians built this dock, Blaine. Nice. nice. We build good docks. Maggie in the boat. In the boat. Good girl. I like to explore islands, but many islands around here are privately owned, so you always have to check to see if there's signs or anything. But we like islands because we can let Maggie run loose because there's no way she's gonna escape. But check out this cute little island. Nice grass, arbutus trees. It'd be a perfect beach to go up on right there with the dinghy. But there's a sign right there. What do you guys think? Is it private property? Area closed. Do not enter. Or in reverse, go shift. Woo! This is a sacred site, Blaine. There we go. It's a First Nations sacred site. Well, that's a different one. I like that. It's actually marked so people don't go on it. 
This is the morning we're waking up to. There's English camp over there underneath all the fog. We're going to climb that hill this morning right there. It's a lot easier going for a hike in warm weather. Cold weather, it's like jacket, layers mola, and layers and layers. or your bula, hat, jacket, pants, mitts. A lot of stuff to get on to get ready. Then you got to dress the dog too. The dog needs her jacket, her harness. A lot of stuff going on to go hiking in the winter. Okay, are we ready? Ready. Let's do it. Are okay. You lock the door or just leave it unlocked? I'll just leave it unlocked. Bye bye, Tanga. trail so we're here right now all the way up we're gonna go find the English camp cemetery some cool grassy oaks and they're going up Young Hill which is a mile camas lilies bloom we will not be there for the camas lilies and then we're coming all the way back ready do it okay we have another sign 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 everywhere a sign let's go see the English Camp Cemetery, right there, before we come back and do Young Hill. Right turn. Look, someone puts flags by them. Okay, I see a signpost. So these are British Marines that are over here. And one civilian from what I understand. And they are left here on American soil. They weren't returned home. And I have no clue why. Let's see. Four of the Marines drowned, two drowning together. Privates Ellis and Kitty. Private Wensley's body was never found. Only his memory rests here. So, G.E. Stewart. Sully departed his life, age 28, native of Derby, England. And that's that one right there. Joss Ellis and Thomas Kitty, privates. Accidentally drowned January 4th, 1863. William Davis, who accidentally drowned age 26. Okay, so the big one is Joss Ellis, Joseph Ellis, and Thomas Kitty. William Davis is the next one. He accidentally drowned 26. And then William Taylor is the next one, a little shorter one there. He was age 34. He was accidentally shot by his brother. And then Charles Wood, private, died 1869, age 28. He accidentally drowned in the Jason Harbor on April 7th, 1869. His body was never found. Huh. And they were never returned to England. This is a good day as any To start the rebuilding of life The roads that lay open are many when the old one's gone under the knife And I can feel the sun on my skin Beginning to thaw from within wonder why we put ourselves through this. First of all, it's really nice to get off the boat and get some exercise. Second of all, we love exploring where we go. Third of all, it's absolutely beautiful. It's hard on us, but we do enjoy hiking. We do. We're not complaining the whole way. Just a little bit of the way. Excuses were two for a penny. 
We are pretty south, eh? There's Victoria over there. There's our boat. You guys see it? Look, there's Tangaroa. And that's Young Hill. That's the view we wanted to see. It's absolutely stunning. And now we are heading back to the boat. Maybe we'll fly the drone off the boat. And then we are going to head back to Sydney, clear into customs, and head back to our mooring and see our kids because we have not yet seen them this year. Nope. So far this whole year, we have not seen them. Nope, we haven't seen them this whole year. That joke gets old really it fast, does. doesn't it? <laughs> Favorite part of hiking is going down. We'll be down in like five minutes. Yeah, but we're going <laughs> down. <laughs> it was one hour up, but it's gonna be like five minutes down. Absolutely that's, that's beautiful though. If you guys get to Young Hill, San Juan, highly recommend hiking up here. Gorgeous view, gorgeous hike, even in the winter. What's really cool about um, liveaboards is you always meet the best people. So they just came over and chatted. They're just heading to shore. I wish we met them yesterday. They live on board Argo over there. And um, yeah, they're kind of doing the same thing as we're doing. So they're kind of fixing up the boat, cruising. They just came up from California and they recognized this boat from California where they saw it. And their friend had put an offer in on Tangroa. I'm kind of glad they didn't get it. But yeah, it's awesome meeting other cruisers because everybody's kind of like-minded. So we're, we're just stopped outside Sydney because we got to put the fenders down 
get the lines on and Blaine's got to pull the tender up and we put it on what's called the hip which is the back aft which is back of the boat on the port side which is left because we're going to put starboard side to the dock so we're going to put our dinghy up on the aft hip port aft hip I just call it on the boat's hip port hip it works okay you want to see a really cool entrance we're going into Sydney British Columbia it's kind of pretty in our hometown Please note that although cannabis, marijuana is legal and regulated in Canada as of October 17, 2018, it remains illegal to bring it across the border. Are any persons on board bringing cannabis or goods containing cannabis into Canada? If so, please ensure to declare it to the Border Services Officer. Your call is being transferred. One moment, please. Yes, hi, my name's Janice Carmina. I'm just coming in by a boat. Um, we just docked at the Customs Dock in Sydney. Uh, registration number is 843-669, registered under the name Tanga Roa. It was awesome. That was our San Juan trip, Blaine. Come over here and say like... Oh, got stuffs to do. We got stuffs to do. But we're back on our home mooring. San Juan's is awesome. How long were you gone for? Week and a half. Week and, week and a half. More. Hope you guys enjoyed the videos. Now, guess what? We have four months to get the engines ready to go in the boat. So it's back to boat work. More got slacking. that plane? You got four months to get that no engine rebuilt. No more slacking. It's his turn now. Lots of work. Okay, let's go. Uh -huh.